Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 261 for Friday, June 26th, 2020. Folks, and welcome back to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in San Jose, California, Paul Kent. Hey, man. It's been a busy week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we missed our show Monday, and uh, and so we decided we'd, we'd, we'd sneak one in here because we've had lots going on. Paul, you and I, hey, just hours ago, not even hours as of the moment that we're recording this, we released our, what was previously our secret little project that we had been doing with the Macworld All-Star Band. Yeah, it's so nice. It was just fun to see these guys. So how many years? Well, actually, we'll go back to the beginning. Sure. Dave and I worked in an industry. I worked, Dave continues to work in an industry, you know, around around Apple. You know, Dave has websites and podcasts and information and services in that industry. And I used to organize a, a trade show that was in that industry. And at that trade show every year, uh, there were parties, many parties. And then uh, we decided to put together a little industry band and um, and uh, and play at a party. And so we played at a party. And then Dave said, well, we need a better party. And so then Dave started hosting the party that we would play at the party. You, you, and, uh, you paint that very kindly. It, were it not for that guy, Mr. Paul Kent... I never would have started hosting my own party because it really was your idea. I mean, uh, I, I said we need to play at a better party. Like we all, we, we wanted to play at a party that was geared towards the band, not just like the band in the corner. And so that was it. But but you you were definitely the catalyst to that first one happening. So, uh, you know. It, it, well, I appreciate that. And yeah. it worked out good for well, all thank of us. You. So, yeah. you know, this band came together and the band was people who worked in the industry, a couple of people who were customers in the industry, you know, people from the media part of the industry. And they're, basically the core of the band that started was together the whole time. We had a couple of people come in for a little while and didn't stay for very long. That's Two true. People. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, Scott Schoenbach. But really, the, Jason the guys who formed this band played together for over 10 years. And, well, it was uh, more than that, wasn't it? It was over 10 years, over 10 years. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. that, that number, that, that phrase is correct. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the fun thing was we would, we would come into town. We, we would have a conversation by email or text message about what songs do we want to play this year. Every guy would submit the songs that he wanted. Uh, we had a rotating leader. So every year, a different guy would be the leader who would pick the songs and make the set list. And, um, and then we would rehearse exactly one time when everybody would come into town for this trade show. And so you were expected to come pretty ready to go. And then we <laughs> pretty ready to go. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we play the party and have a good time. And, you know, it was just such a, it's just one of those things that it was just happy. It was just a joy. It was, you know, guys who really like each other. I'm not going to use past tense because now we're present tense again. Yeah. Guys who like each other, got a kick out of each other, largely had a very similar musical dictionary. Like the songs that we all liked largely were yeah, the, the Venn diagram were intersected more than well enough to make it work. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, we would have a lot of laughs and, you know, we would have a meal together too. And it was just a really joyous thing to be able to do. And it was, you know, something that created a lot of good memories. People who worked in our industry, who came to the great party, it made them feel real good about, you know, seeing their friends playing music together. So it just worked on so many levels. And then this trade show that I was running uh, ceased to be after a certain amount of time. And, you know, basically we were done and years we go We had by, no more opportunity to play. We, That's right. We did not. We were never in the same place at the same time. Yeah. So the years go by, you know, we're still friends, keep in touch. And then COVID happens and we're all sheltering in place and all of these virtual projects start to pop up. And then who gets the credit for? So, so, so yeah. So we, we have this text group that, that, you know, amongst our, the, 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 this band, right. And it flares up, you know, on average once every eight to 14 months, like someone will post something and then it'll go on for about a week, you know, well, and, and we wind up like 
addressing whatever it is somebody posted. It might just be something stupid. And, and, you know, then we sort of share what's going on in our lives. And then it, you know, as, as normal, it sort of peters out and, and, you know, we kind of move back on with, with whatever things are happening. So it had been about eight months or so since our, our last little thing, maybe a little longer. And I got a text from a listener to many of uh, certainly uh, the Mac Geek Gab podcast that I do, but other podcasts. And, you know, he follows the, the people that are still in the industry and the, this guy named Terry Austin. And he texted me and he said, you know, with all these things that are going on with this was maybe six or eight weeks ago with all these things that are going on in the world with, with COVID and everybody sheltering in place and putting out these projects, like you mentioned, Paul, uh, He's like, it would be great if the Macworld All-Star Band did something. And I thought, you know what? This is an excuse. I never expected we would do it. I just expected it was a good excuse for me to text and check in with my buddies in the Macworld All-Star Band. Like, you I mean, you and I talk. Come together? What's that? You really never thought it would happen? I, 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 you know, I, I knew that there were people that were in very different parts of their lives right now. And so I, I didn't get my hopes up. I, I, I wanted it to like, I liked the idea, but it was more like, all right, well, we can talk about a thing and it's, it'll give us something to do and it'll probably peter out in a week. And it did. It was like this weird little arc. We, you know, we started talking about that. Then we started talking about other things. And then at about the 10 day mark, it, it ramped back up again. And I was like, are we going to do this thing though? <laughs> and it was like, aha, wait, the seed has germinated, you know? <laughs> um, and so, yeah. So everybody recorded their own, we, we had to pick a song and that was, that I think was the process, the part of the process where it just sort of petered out. And finally I just picked a song. I'm like, we're doing feeling all right. Uh, and, and I picked that one for a couple of reasons. One was we always played it well. I mean, it's two chords, but you know, we'd, we had played it at almost, if not every party we had done. And of all the songs that we played, that was the one that we as a band, I feel like really evolved the most. Like we learned better how to play that song. It's a simple tune, but you know, getting the groove right and all that stuff. Like we'd really kind of mastered that over, you know, whatever, 15 years of trying to play the stupid song. And, and it also had lots of opportunities for uh, verse lyrics. There's, you know, 18 lines to that song. There, there's, there's three verses of six lines each. And the lyrics are, in my opinion, very nonsensical. They, I, it's the one song, I think I've even mentioned it on this show years ago. I, I cannot memorize the lyrics to this song. I, I, can, I know each couplet, but putting them together in order makes no sense, at least to me. So I thought, well, this this could work. Like we could have a different person sing a different line and, and everybody gets a chance to shine and, and all of this. And so it was like, we're, we're doing feeling all right. And everybody was like, I'm in like, okay, whew, great. Now let's figure out the logistics. And so I reached out to uh, Wally Trewinsky who had done all of the, um, he, on his own, he had assembled a, a, you know, ragtag group of, of people with cameras and they did multicam shots completely unbeknownst to us. I mean, I guess we sort of knew that they were doing things, but I never realized quite at the level until, you know, we would a couple of months after the party, we would get these, you know, it would show up on YouTube and there was this multicam video shot of, of us. It's like, there's like 12 cameras here. How did you guys do that? <laughs> you know? And so we reached out to Wally and said, would, you know, would you, would you join the band for this project? Would you, you know, would you do this with us? And he was like, I'm in absolutely. You know, he, like us had great memories of all those parties and everything. And so, so everybody recorded on their own, uh, as you do in these days, both video and audio. And, uh, I learned a lot about logic in this project. This is the first song I've ever mixed from soup to nuts in, in logic and to pick and one. Mastered. Yeah, I've mastered many things, um, but but yes, I did the, the the mix, the production, and the mastering. I, I I I say that and take full credit, but it's not entirely true. I had my 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 co-producer was my daughter Skylar, and she especially on this project. I mean, I've mentioned that she and I have been working a lot in the studio together, and she's really helped me with a lot of things. But especially on this project, because she really brought an objectivity to it that was awesome and really helped kind of pull it all together. Hey, Skylar. Yeah, no, it like she made a huge difference to this, and um, so yeah, it was a little. It, I mean, in retrospect, choosing to mix a song that turns out to have you know forty six individual tracks and six buses in logic as sort of the first, you know, let's cut your teeth on this thing here. 
Um, <laughs> I, you know, I mean, it worked out. I in, learned in it. for a dime in for a dollar. That's it. Well, that was it. It was like, okay, we're just, we're just going to do it. Um, and, uh, and, and I learned a ton. I mean, I already knew logic, you know, on the surface I'd done, we'd done all the fling stuff in it on the, for the last round, but I didn't do the mixing. Russ did all of that, uh, mixing, but it was done here. So I was, you know, part, I've been part of the process in many ways, but, uh, but this was the first one where it was like, okay, ain't, ain't nobody else going to go up into the studio and get this done. Um, <laughs> but I learned a lot about, you know, blending. We had two bass players, three guitar players, uh, keys, drums, and then seven vocalists. And I learned a lot about kind of blending things together and how to, how to, how to do all that and, and make it sound cohesive. Like it all was one thing, not, not seven Any specific tips you can share. Um, a lot of, so I, you know, I mentioned we did six buses. Uh, I did, as I often do, I did a bus for the drums. Uh, and when I say bus, what I mean is in, and, and I'll give logic specific, but this would apply to any, um, you know, any DAW by default, your track is going to be mapped for its output to go to, you know, the main output, right? Like just, you know, you, whatever happens after the fader, you know, you do whatever your effects and your, your, all that stuff. And then it goes to the main output, just like it would on like a mixing console. Well, I send these things instead of going to the main output, I send it to a bus output and that gives me one more track to like a, a it's a sub it's a sub mix essentially where I can take what's being sent. It's not at the main output yet. The bus is what goes to the main output. And then on that, I can use some compression or whatever. And now I can compress sets of tracks together as opposed to just having to put compression on the whole thing, like on the main output or whatever. And I do that with drums. I've learned to do that with drums. I should say, and I experimented and it worked quite well doing that with things like all the guitars and the basses and all the vocals. And it, you know, for like harmony vocals where it's, you know, essentially a gang of people. I told everybody just pick whatever harmony you're comfortable with, you know, sing. We want everybody to be their best. So whatever you think is your best, that's you. Don't worry about what other people are doing. I'll figure it out and we'll assemble that here and we'll blend it together. And, um, and so, you know, but, but taking all those harmonies and running it through like some pretty heavy compression to make it sound like one group of people singing as opposed to seven or whatever, 10 individual people singing, uh, makes a big difference. So I, I, I used a lot of parallel compression on this, which essentially is you, you have two signals, one that's massively compressed and one that's absolutely not compressed at all. And you blend them together. So you get that benefit of all that glue, that compression, especially like really massive, like squashing compression gives you without losing the fact that yes, in fact, it is a bunch of different people. So you want a little bit of that, uh, separation in there. And so, you know, I forget where I was on the vocals and I can't bring up the logic project now because I'm using logic to record the show. But, um, I think on the vocals, it was probably 70% uh, compression and, and 30% not, you know, just to, but those tricks really, really make a difference and, um, and help keep things kind of clean and orderly too, while you're trying to, to, you know, pull it all together. Cause man, yeah, if you listen to the mix of, you know, when you watch the video, to me, it sounds huge, but tight, if that makes sense. I mean, it sounds expansive, but nothing is oddly peeking out in weird times. You know, the stuff that's supposed to peek out, it when it's supposed to peek out, peeks out. And so it, I found the mix really, you know, you did, how many mixes did you give us to, I think 10 before we got the final mix, right? You, yeah, ten, there were 10, 10 final candidates. There were 10, well, none, there were maybe two final candidates. I mean, there were, there were, you know, mixes along the way, like, okay, we've got these tracks in and I've sort of messed with it. And here's a, a, a rough overview of where we're headed with this. You know, does anybody hear anything? And like you, but what you, well, first of all, thank you for what you said, because it, I'm like beaming with pride here like that the, at least one person hears it that way which is great but um the the concept of you don't want something that's going to bring you out of the song you don't want something that's so distracting that you're like wait why did they do that you know that that's the 
that's sort of the the goal and to hear that that at least for you that it works that way like actually especially for you that it works that way because you are way more in it than most other listeners you know other than the the seven of us that were involved or nine of mm -hmm. us that were involved if you count wally and skyler um you know we know what's supposed to happen next so you know we, it's easy for us to get brought out of the mix um so especially that yeah it's good yeah yeah, it's well, it was great crazy. project. Fun, fun, fun. to collaborate in that yeah. way. And um, the final project, you know, hat tip to Wally. I think huh. it looks beautiful. Hat tip to all the players. They really that that actually from inside that actually is the thing is like everyone. Everyone's contribution made me remember everyone. They, yes. they, they, everybody's part was exactly what I remembered it like being like playing with those people, all very unique humans and different personalities. You know, and um, it was it, it in that way, it feels like a band, not like like a yeah. bunch of guys just doing a bunch of part guys who haven't really seen each other in a long time. It really it feels like a cohesive piece of art. And it was really I'm really proud of it. I mean, I know I, I busted you a little bit as, as we were on the way gently, um, you know, with suggestions and that type of thing. Sure. But I got to say, at the end of the day, I think everyone's input you know, guided it to a really healthy yeah. place. Yeah. You know, no, it, I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good. Yeah. It was a, it was a collaboration. Everybody, everybody put their mark on it. Um, which is, which is important. You know, it, it, I got, I got a little, uh, at, at one point it was like, okay, wait a minute. Y you know, we, we can't, we, everybody's idea can't be implemented, even if everybody's idea is good. Right. Like that's the tough part of things like this is, you know, I well, and also done by done by text chatter is like, yeah, you yeah. know, that's yeah. different than a bunch of people in a room listening to stuff. And sure break, you know, that it's really hard to stay focused, discern the actionable input, you know, like, yeah, do this all literally virtually. I mean, it was all, all virtual. Comment, yeah. All commentary was over text messages. Right. All input to you. And, you know. I would like go away for a while and there'd be 34 text messages for me to catch up on the thread. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was an interesting thing. I, I mean, certainly I, I was the focal point of this project and I knew that I, I became the leader of a project that I didn't want to have a leader um, because it, you know, it truly was a collaboration of all of us, but, but obviously me doing the mix here and being the focal point kind of put me in a position where I was forced to make you know, to, to decide whose emergency was, was most important, you know, or, or, or best. And, and, and that's an interesting place to be, you know, I was essentially the director of this without, without really intending to be that, uh, sure. at the outset. And so it was like, okay, yep. All right. That wasn't my idea. You know, I would, I was going to do that differently, but this, you know, what that person just said, like, that makes sense with the mix. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let me try that. You know? And, um, and that's basically where I got with it was, it, you know, especially with the audio mix. Anytime anybody suggested something, it was like, yeah, you know what? Let me save a copy of the project and let me try their thing. What's the worst that could happen? It sounds like crap. And, right. and, and, you know, I mean, at some point in time, somebody has got to make the choice. Like, is it that, or is it this? And it wasn't always me to be perfectly honest. I tried to leave it up to the group consensus, but uh, hard, very hard to do. I, it, I could not do what you did. I it, could not constantly be reacting to input and, you know, if I heard an idea that I knew was just going to be my time, yeah. you know, and it wasn't yeah. going to take us anywhere, I would be highly sensitive. You did a really nice job. And, Thanks, man. And just saying very, you know, even keeled and taking it all in, you know, paying respect to everybody that was offering. I mean, you asked for the input, so you're going to get yeah, it. Yeah, so you're going to get it. I would, right. never, I would never have asked in the beginning. I would be like, <laughs> I got it from here. Oh, yeah. I no, like, I, I got it. <laughs> I, yeah, I knew asking. I mean, I knew what that meant, especially with this particular group of people, right? It was like, I know where I'm going to go with this, you know. And to be fair, there were moments of the project where it was like, uh, I need input on this, but I do not. Like this, this is, this is not going to be productive if I ask for seven people's input on this. So it was like, let me play it for Skylar. Let me, you know, let, let me get an objective viewpoint that's, that's not tied to their own performance or, you, you know, some other thing, which not to invalidate that. Like this is a, I mean, this was a pet project of all of us. Obviously we didn't get paid. We're asking people to donate money to music cares for it, which I think is an important thing, but, um, but, you know, I mean, it, like it's valid that everybody kind of wants to to shine and be, you know, uh, highlighted in the right ways and all that. And that's great. Uh, but when there were decisions to be made about th like 
there was no way that I was going to crowdsource the decision about who sang which vocal line <laughs> like that. I realized was like, this is, I've put myself in the worst position possible because I cannot ask everyone and I have to make this decision. So, but, and that's one of the places where Skylar helped me. We listened to each person sing the entire song and we made a spreadsheet that will never exist and never be shared uh, where we just rated each line. It was one, two or three. And one was, it's, it's like not, it would, we would ask it to be redone. Two is like passable and three was great. And the goal was to make everybody sound great. So we, when we got to the end of doing that, uh, seven times or whatever, you know, we had this, this matrix and it was, it almost worked. Like it almost had like just naturally this thing. There was one line of the song that none of us could sing. And so we spent about a half hour teaching me how to sing this line and experimenting with different things. And, uh, and so that's one of the lines I picked up in the tune, but, um, but you know, it worked out really well because everybody sounds great even people that, that don't sing much it was awesome the mac world all-star band is a is a good lesson in a band where there's a wide range of ex musical experience coming totally. together yeah and you know again it's not a band that's you know out competing for corporate gigs every week it, right it's a, but it, it's a band and you want and you know everybody wanted it to be good and i would say that um the more experienced guys helped the less experienced guys, less experienced guys were, they knew where their limits were and were happy to, you know, not push totally in the band, you know, the need to go beyond their limits in the band. And so, you know, whether it was a song choice or whether it was a, you know, a part three guitar players, so we had a lot of things going on guitar wise. Um, and then we had, you know, really good players. So, and, and I think in essence, you know, you and Chuck and Dwayne, there was always, it was never a messy groove. It was always a constant thing that we can, we can layer stuff on top yeah. and feel cohesive. So, you know, I, maybe that's the thing is it would be hard to have, it would be hard to have a band with a wide mix and, you know, that you wanted to actually put in front of people and, you know, say it was cohesive. Probably, you know, you start, if you, if you had a, 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 a beginning drummer, that would make it hard. If, if, if groove yeah. and time yeah. were not, straight um and that I, my to my experience that just encourages everybody else to start being a little bit more relaxed about stuff and then it all sounds relaxed and so there was one moment that, of the of this tune where I, what i did was i put together a very scratch drum track chris our piano player put together a very scratch piano and vocal track just so everybody would have something to track to but there was one drum fill where in the scratch track i completely like rushed the beat and i knew it but I was like, well, it's fine. Everybody's going to track to the click and then I'll just go, I'm going to retract my drums anyway. Like this was this, there was never any intention of that original drum part being part of the final. So it was like, it doesn't matter. Everybody's going to track to the click. And I would say half the people track to the click and half the people track to me. And mm -hmm. then I had to go back and play my drum part and I had both going like click and everybody else. And I couldn't play that measure in time anymore. Cause I'm hearing everybody reacting to a drummer that had played it out of time. And it like that measure of the tune took me hours to finally get right. It was like, okay, which person, you know, which of the two bass players played to the click? Great. Mute the other guy. He's out. Like we don't need it for that one measure of the song. Okay, great. You know, and then which guitar players. And I think, I wound up nudging, I muted one or maybe even two guitars and I nudged another guitar to like hit on, you know, on the click or whatever. Um, and, and thankfully Chris and one of the bass players had tracked to a click. So it was like, okay, I've got that foundation. And I just sort of added other tracks in and, and massaged them until it felt full. And it was like, okay, great. I don't need to worry about filling the other guys in. They can, they can all sit this measure out. And, and then I played the, even getting my drum fill right. I was trying to slice and dice it in logic, which you can do. And I probably spent an hour on that and just never quite got it. And finally I'm sitting here and I'm like, you know what? My drums are like four feet over there. All I need to do is go play that same fill. Now it, there was a video to it. So I needed to play literally the exact same fill. I just needed to do it in time. And I'm like, I can do that. Like I I've been <laughs> messing with this fill for an hour. I know exactly for what, what it's worth. The slice and dice feature of Logic is really, I don't know what it's like in other in apps, but in Logic, it's really, really good. It's good, but you, you can go 
it, it's I it, when I'm using it, I can ruin a song with it. it. You know, like there's you can go too far. Uh, I certainly can, and and that's what was happening with the the drum part. And finally, it was like I'm just gonna I'm just gonna retrack it. And it you know it was perfect. And it just so happened that Wally chose to highlight the drums on that on that one fill. And I mm -hmm. didn't even notice it the first time I watched the video. And we were, you know, I was like maybe four bars past it. I'm like, wait a minute. I got to rewind. Like, I think he highlighted like the, the video part that I was worried wasn't going to sync up because it was actually a different drum part. Like, I didn't even notice that it wasn't the same thing. That's funny. You were you worried about sync, you know, obviously. So I tracked, I audio tracked my guitar solo. Yeah. And then later I went back and, you know, tried to to mime my guitar solo for video. And it was just, you know, I couldn't get it done. Right. Yeah. That's so hard. I got, I got close. And then I was like, Oh, this is kind of weird. You know, maybe I should just go the other way. And I actually recorded a video of me playing a broomstick. Just it's it was so <laughs> sublimely ridiculous. Sure. Uh, you know, I don't think Wally got the joke, but um, you know, I don't know. It's an interesting thing that the syncing and the tracking, I just went through this with this, another project that I'm going on. And, um, uh, it's, it's hard. Oh, and it's, it's hard. Obvious. Yep. And it's obvious you know, to us as musicians. And it, you know, I, I hope so because the one I just did, I could not get it close, much closer after many, many takes. Yeah. So I basically thrown it to the air to see what people say. Yeah. I, um, like, like drums are the, are the most, anything percussive. So piano and drums I find are the things that non-musicians might notice and it, and it, and emphasis on might, but you know, if you see somebody whack a snare drum and you don't hear the snare drum or you hear it, you know, half a second later or a full second later or whatever, like that is different. But quite frankly, you know, like that drum fill in the tune, you won't even know which one it is. And unless you like, I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell, I can't even tell. And I, I am certain that it's like the video is of a different performance of me playing that fill. Mm. There's like, there's no question. I can tell you definitively because I was the guy, but, um, but I, you know, you can't, I can't tell most people probably wouldn't even, they would, they would hear a drum fill and they would see a drummer doing things on the drums with sticks and they'd be like, right. The drummer just played that fill. It's like, oh uh, no, you know, <laughs> but yeah, but most people won't notice that stuff, but we musicians, I mean, timing is a thing for us. So absolutely yeah. we notice. Yeah. 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 So good job. Great mix. Yeah, great awesome. Wally video. So great to all fun. the players. Hope people like it. Good cause that it's supporting. Yeah. Um, and thank you, you know, to the, my bandmates for coming together and, you know, giving, that's the best part I, that I can find of this terrible time. Yes. Is some of these connections, they either get deeper and stronger or renewed. And I think that that's, that's kind of what this is. Hey, Dave, you, um, you ventured out into the, into the brave new world to actually do your first Post COVID gig. I, uh, yeah. My first pandemic gig, I faced my re-entry anxiety. It was, it was logistically perfect. Uh, the weather was great, which mattered because it was outdoors. Uh, we were on a stage at the, uh, literally kind of raised up just past the end zone of a football field. And the, the crowd sat in the football field. So it was, you know, it was perfect. There was plenty of room, you know, to your, you, you, in fact, we were talking about y y the concern that you had brought up a few weeks ago on the show here, where it's like, you know, even just, even if everything is, is right and, and, you know, people won't be coming up to the stage or whatever, just by being the entertainment and the focal point, you're bringing people together. And is, is there a responsibility in that too? And, these people had an entire football field to spread out on. So I felt pretty good about it. There were some people, this was in an area of our state where people are taking this pandemic less seriously than say in my area. Um, their numbers are the same as my area, which is, you know, basically between zero and one new cases a day for the last uh, two weeks. So, very, very like we are in as far as America goes, we are in the right area of the country here to think about venturing out, still keeping social distance and all that stuff. But, you know, it's it's not flaring up here right now. In fact, it's very much the opposite. Um, there were some people that that con there was a group of about 30 people that were just congregating together 
And then there were another maybe, you know, 20 to 30 individual pockets of people that had no interest in being part of this congregation. And, and that was all fine. Like everybody that wanted to be distant could be. And the people that, that don't believe this is a real thing or don't worry about it could do their thing and not worry about it, which they were going to do anyway. So, um, the band was up on a stage where we, the three of us in the band, it was monkey fist. So Maddie and Johnny and I had had, you know, the talk uh, ahead of time. We worked out how we would set things up so that it, there weren't any opportunities for team lifting of gear or anything like that. So that we didn't have to be, you know, close to each other. The stage was super wide. We were all able to be, you know, six plus feet from each other. But we did have the talk because we knew, look, we're going to be on stage together and interacting for about four hours. Like we have to assume that at some points we are going to, you know, kind of break that that social isolation bubble even unintentionally. And so it was like, are we comfortable with each other in that regard? And and we all had, yeah. you know, kind of, we, you know, we just spilled it all out. Like, here's what we've been doing. Here's where we are. And everybody was like, okay, yeah, like I'm okay with that. And so, so we agreed to do the gig together. And I'll tell you, it sound check was, was actually the most emotional moment for me because it was the first time that I got to play and sing with other humans since this all began, you know, or those guys. I mean, I, I played and sang with my daughter a couple of times, you know, we just grab some guitars and then go play on the porch or whatever, which is good. But, you know, I missed that gig thing where, you know, we've got people that are digging in and kind of doing Me the too, thing. Man. Yeah. Right. And so there was, and we all kind of, Johnny and I were talking about it beforehand. He's like, I, I gotta be honest. He's like, I, I'm a little worried. I might get a little, you know, choked up here. I'm like, Oh yeah, same. I'm, I'm not worried. I'm expecting it. <laughs> like this is, it would be weird if I didn't, but that, you know, the first, the, the song we played during soundcheck was like, Oh yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. How many people do you think you paid for? played for yeah there was probably i don't know let's say a hundred maybe okay. yeah and monkey fist you're playing a cajon do you play any dance music um we we there there are times where people will dance to monkey fist songs for sure yeah yeah okay. yep um and there were people dancing last night for sure they mm. they they kind of stayed in their silos you know got it yep yeah yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, it would, but it was I weird. Mean, like there were some, we had put, put up cones in front of the stage so that, you know, it was in front of the stage. far in front of the stage. Right. So it was obvious that, you know, there's a line here and there were like, especially while we were setting up, there were, there was one person that, you know, there were a couple of people that sort of came up and we were like, we're social distancing here. Like, you know, not no judgment about you, whether or not you're going to do this with other people, but we are. And, and everybody respected that except one guy just kind of like came up on the stage and I just left. I was like, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to ruin the mood here, but I'm also not going to participate in this. He, he came up and he wanted to tell us something and he had some shirts for us and oh my he was God. a very, very nice guy, but it yeah. was like, okay. And you know, in retrospect, I should have simply, I, I was comfortable on stage knowing that the stage was our sacred place. I was comfortable on stage in the, the huge expanse of space that we had, not wearing a mask, knowing it was just Maddie and Johnny also on the stage, right? Like how, mo how much mask use was involved at all? And what was the conversation amongst the band members about that? So like, did you wear masks during setup? We, no, we did not wear masks during setup. We, we knew that we had, we talked about it. We're like, well, you know, w once we get there and we see the lay of the land, we can decide, you know, in individually, it's not, it didn't need to be a collective decision, right? You know, um, uh, whether we should all wear masks or not. And, uh, and we all saw it and we were like, no, this is going to be fine. I mean, we can, we can be all right. But in retrospect, I should have worn a mask during setup and tear down just to communicate to the people that weren't my band members, AKA the people that I had not had in-depth conversations with about all this, that please take it. I am taking this very seriously. In addition to the fact that, you know, I've had a family member pass away from this thing and, mm. uh, and all of that, like I'm also experiencing some re-entry anxiety that even for me doesn't match up with my logical analysis of the situation. And, and the guys in the band knew that and respected it. And were like, amazingly respectful about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wasn't worried about it on stage, but did when you, you these acknowledge other the up. uniqueness of the 
situation, did you acknowledge it on mic to your audience? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, I insisted that we play the Georgia Satellites, Keep Your Hands to Yourself. I mean, that was... <laughs> yeah. Dancing with, dancing with Myself. Yeah, Dancing With Myself would have been a good one. We, we did play, um, because we live in New England here, we played Sweet Caroline. And, and so we, uh, Johnny on the fly altered the lyrics a little bit to, to sort of fit, you know, hands, not touching hands, you know, <laughs> like the whole thing, which was good. I mean, That's yeah, great. it was, I mean, yeah, we definitely acknowledged it. And the, honestly, the part that was weird and it would have been weird, even if the, this was a year ago, this stage was, I mean, huge, like the house rockers would have been swimming on this stage. And, and Ooh. so we kept, you know, our distance from each other, but we were a good six or eight feet from one another, the three of us mm -hmm. each were. And with monkey fist, that has never happened before. We're very mm -hmm. used to being on top of each other. And it was very strange to me to only hear Maddie's guitar out of the monitor, as opposed to, you know, the energy coming from his acoustic guitar. Like that was a, that was the strangest part about it. And it, like I said, just be, based on the size of the stage, we would have spread out probably the same amount regardless. We might've been a little tighter, but I don't think we would have been tight. Like we normally are in the, you know, in the corner of a club somewhere or whatever. So yeah. that, that was the thing that took two or three songs for us to, to get used to, you know, cause there, there there's, there's a little more delay between when someone hits a, an instrument and you hear it and, and it makes a difference when you're first time the house rockers played a really like, it wasn't even a stage. It was just a big spread out area yeah. in front of a fountain. First time I remember, cause you, we usually are on top of each other. This, yeah. this was the first time we had that. We had a horrible gig yeah. I and mean, the communication between the band the cohesiveness, the energy on the stage just never got there. Over time, we have learned to play big stages. You get used to it. Yeah, totally. And and to be discerning about our mix and, you know, and, you know, understanding the value of a, you know, one band member crossing the stage to play with another band member and you know, those things that, that create the energy. Yes. But it is a thing, you know, it's a thing. A, like a, a three piece band. I mean, the police, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know? right. You got to you hey. got to work that stage to make it work. But yeah, but and I'm we, really happy for you. Thanks, man. Yeah, it worked out well. We 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 will be back there in three weeks. Um, they will they will have they even apologized to us for you know in retrospect not putting up sort of more clear signs about how people should and shouldn't approach the stage. Um, you know, and part of that's our fault. We we got into a request mode, which sort of invited people to come closer mm. to the state, you know, and we had talked about that ahead of time, like how we were going to deal with it. But, you know, we didn't talk about it with our audience ahead of time. We just talked about it with ourselves. So there was a training process for everyone. And like I said, there's there was certainly a, a sizable contingent of the people there that aren't taking their the, the the their response to this pandemic is is quite a, a lot less serious than mine. And look, the reality is it's our first pandemic for everybody. I guarantee yeah. you every one of us will make a mistake. Like there's no yeah. way anybody's going to get it right. So I, I, this is not a judgment thing. It was just more an acknowledgement. Like we're doing this this way. You're doing it that way. There's a little bit of that that doesn't mix. So we got to figure that out, you, you know, and, and without making it so weird that we alienate the audience and, and sort of ruin the vibe. Um, but, I get it. but you know, like I, like I said, I would wear a mask the next time we set up there uh, just during setup, just to, it, just to communicate to people, you know, yes. right. You know, yes. like, right. Okay. And hopefully well, that's, that's, that's that. the thing is like yeah. the responsible people will be responsible and, and right. First of all, I, you know, I'm living vicariously through you and I can just hear how happy you are about it. It makes me happy to think that this is hap that yeah. this happens. And yeah, you know, in my area, a few more restaurants have added music. I've turned down those gigs. Mm. Um, uh, uh, and my, uh, but I'm, I have a lot of anxiety about turning them down and, you know, just feel a little lost that, you know, some people are starting their plan for new normal and I'm not right. I'm still, I, I'm totally with you, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And my wife says, you know, you, you, you get grouchy about this because you're, it's not, it's your fear of missing out. And, you know, I have, I'm having a hard time letting other people yep. take the gigs. You know, to me, here's where my head is. Like, thinking about your situation. Um, you are responsible. And clearly the venue that you played is responsible. The problem is, to me, once you go down the path 
the irresponsible venue sees, oh, music is right. working for getting business for that people. We want music too. And then, you know, if they, uh, and then once like the irresponsibility starts with people coming to the stage and asking for um, requests or can you wish my friend a happy birthday and all the little things that can happen. The problem is, is, is the, is the people who don't care. Right. 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 And oh, and, so, and then it becomes the, the normal. Care, right. Yes. Yep. And that's, you know, and again, am I over rationalizing it? I, don't I mean, know. You, you tell me. I, I think, I, well, I say yes, but only because I recognize this behavior. I mean, I'm exactly the same way and perhaps even worse. Like if it, this gig, I did not make this come together. Right. John, uh, th this was at a place that's never had music before. It's a perfect setup, especially right now. I mean, a, a yeah. stage, uh, you know, on a hill at the end of a football field, like it literally doesn't get any better than that for, for this right now. Right. Um, did you feel you could connect with an audience with the amount of distance you were required to have? I don't know how loud you were, you know, and how much pervasive your sound was. No but, problem. You know, for me, really? Yeah, no problem. It was awesome. It, I mean, it was so, yes, it, no problem. People, I mean, people were far away, but you know, you can see people when they're far away. Those, those folks standing on the, the you know, the stages in arenas and stuff that start pointing out people in, you know, four sections back or whatever. Hey, you can see them. They're right there if they're well lit. And this was a 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. thing. So, you know, you could like the, the sun was still up when we finished. Um, yeah. Yeah. You We could. The connection was 100 percent there. 100 percent. And they were just as I excited know. to see live music. I hear this over and over again. You know, the people have missed live music. Totally. And it means a lot to them. And, yep. you know, even if it means that they have to stand at their round table and dance in place, yep. they, it's still, it's okay. I've gotten so many notes about yep. people missing that and needing that and wanting that. And can we make that happen? And I'm still stuck in the mud, man. I'm, oh, no, I'm I, very, I, dude, very happy for you though. I, yeah, I am happy for me too. Thank you. I <laughs> it, No, it like, if it weren't for my family encouraging me to do this, I don't think I would have done it. You know, mm. I, like I brought the idea to my family. It was something I wanted to do. And like I said, from a, from a logical standpoint, looking at the, where the numbers are and what the situation was going to be and all of that, I, you know, I knew that the, the risk there's, there's nothing that's zero risk, but I knew that the risk of this was very, very low. And so I had the conversation with my family and, and I'm like, but still, you know, it, I think it, it's a little early. I don't know. You know, we had to make this decision two weeks ago, three weeks sure. ago. Right. You know, I mean, we could have bailed absolutely, you know, and the guys would have understood they would have done the gig potentially as a duo without me if I had bailed. And they told me that, look, you know, if you get here and you're uncomfortable, don't feel like you're impacting us. Like you that's have cool. to do you No, And that's why I felt so comfortable with it. But it, my family twisted my arm for this. I mean, for sure. And, it, and, and I think that was a very healthy thing for them to do. Like I said, I've, yeah. I've, I've never, I am very fortunately not someone who suffers, you know, anxiety in what, what I would think of as sort of the the classical sense. I mean, I have my mm -hmm. anxious moments. I think like, I assume like we all do, but I don't know, you know, and, um, and this has taught me what a, a slice of, of that kind of anxiety looks like, because mm. I know logically that this is an okay thing to do. And yet I can't bring myself, like I, there's this fear okay. that's quite literally irrational. I mean, it, like the rational part of me and I try to be super self-aware and I, I, I'm very thankful that I've been practicing that and working at that for years, because if I hadn't, I think I'd be in a much worse place right now, to be perfectly honest. Um, but, but even still, it's like, I notice it and I, it's like, I'm still somewhat powerless to it. It's very, it's very fascinating if, when I can step back from it and it's frustrating in it. Um, so I, I have a whole lot. I've always had, I've always felt for people who suffer anxiety. Now I have a little bit of anxiety of, of empathy towards them. Mm. Uh, I, you know, it's not, it, mine is very, very compartmentalized. So it's, it's not the same. And I know that, but at least I have a, a, a glimmer of understanding like, Oh, Holy crap. You have to deal with this with everything. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, like that's sure. yeah. Yeah. So, but it was great to play. And I, I am booked to do Hedwig gigs later in July with oh, a, that's indoors. with a fully masked and socially distant audience. Uh, they can fill the theater to about a third capacity and keep people um, more than six feet apart from other groups of people. 
but have had the same conversation with my, my, it's only a six person cast for Hedwig. So it's a, it's a fairly easy conversation to have because four of them have already been a hundred percent quarantined at the theater essentially. Mm. So, uh, it was just Ken, our guitar player and our bass player. And I, yeah. yeah. So that, that was almost as easy as the monkey fist conversation, but it is indoors. So, you know, there's that extra level of like, mm, is this the right move? And it might not. So I'm going to ask you when you're, I'm going to ask you when you finish this. Yeah. That. Yeah. So when are you doing that? Uh, it starts end of July, mid, mid, mid okay. end of July. Yeah. Yeah. So several weeks this to is, go. This is the social engineering thing. This is the, are we rationalizing the blurring of the line and pushing the line a little farther down the field? Right. Yes. Or are we, are we making informed decisions it's too early to tell on that one? Right. It, well, um, I, a lot. A lot may change. And again, your county again being what it is and yeah. asking for masks yep. indoor. That's, I think that that's a pretty big one, right? That's a huge one. Thank goodness yeah. for them too. Like, like power to the, to whoever made that happen. Thank goodness. No, it, that's actually a state government that has, that has. You know what I'm saying for you, that. like the decision to do an outdoor one that took a large percentage of the decision making, making it easier. Correct. I would imagine you being asked to do an indoor gig reverses that. Oh, it's yeah. No, it, it was a whole different thing. It was like, they, you know, I got the text and, and Brandon, our director was like, are you in? And I'm like, so I have a lot of questions. And, <laughs> and I said, I don't mean to be judgmental about this, but I need this information. He's like, Oh no, 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 no. He says, this was my second question to you after you said yes to being in. So, right. We need to have this conversation. <laughs> I'm like, great. That's you're already like, you know, we're already moving down the path where, where I'm not counting this out yet, you know, and, and, and I, you know, it's pretty easy to get tested. So uh, there's, I'm certainly going to get tested. Uh, and, and I think everyone else is too. In fact, our bass player has been getting tested pretty regularly um, for that project. So, um, it, you know, it, I mean, it, it, I am not an infectious disease scientist and this is what I've had to tell myself. Like I can't be the one I'm, I can't be second guessing science on this. Now it's data. It comes through a lot of filters, but you know, I I've picked CDC Johns Hopkins and the WHO. And if all three of them tend to agree on one point or another, I'm going to go ahead and trust that. You know, Johns Hopkins has been, has been great over the years, yeah. I think, you know, and I, and so they are kind of my lead here and, and, you know, I, we have to look at the data, um, and around here right now, you know, we're the one area of the country that seems to be going in the right direction, which, which is good, but I don't want that to change. I don't want to get complacent. You know, it's not over. So I don't know, man. All right. Well, the week of Dave, I think, has a lot of great things to share. Yeah, good, good to hear a little jump in your step. You know, excited about the Macro project. Yeah. Excited about your live gig. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice. You know, the, the music soothes the soul, right? It does and does man. music heal all? Let us hope. Let us hope. Yeah. All right. Well, that's what we got, folks. Thanks for listening. And uh, we will actually we'll be back uh, early next week. We're recording a, actually a very fun interview on Monday and that'll either be out Monday or Tuesday. So, yeah, t tune in. Or do it. Yeah, it's good stuff. All right. Take it easy. See you, Dave. See you, man. Hey, Dave. Hey, man. Get up on that stage. Always be performing. Yeah, man. It's a good thing. 